This may be the very smallest 100 amp hour battery that you can go buy anywhere. This is definitely the smallest one that we've looked at just by a hair, but let's talk through that. This is the Texella 100 amp hour battery. And this is one that I've not dealt with. So when this one showed up, they did send it to me. Um, I was pretty impressed, right? So one of our reviews that we're gonna do here soon is looking at you know, different options for 2025. And this, you know, kayak guys and gals definitely are looking for the smallest battery, and especially those adding a marine electronics battery to their boat are typically looking for the smallest battery. So that attribute really does matter for a lot of the folks that are watching today. From a dimension standpoint, let me make sure I get this right. We're looking at uh, about nine inches, right at nine inches, eight and an eighth tall. And then the depth on this thing is gonna be right at five and a quarter. Volumetrically, that's extremely small. This thing is tiny and I'll show you how it compares. Oh goodness, that one's heavy to a group 31 battery. It's tiny. We'll do that here in a second. That's heavy. Speaking of heavy, uh, this thing is 20 pounds. So it's about half, less than half the weight of your group 31. If this was a, a lead acid battery, less than half the weight of that. So you're getting uh, plenty of cycle life, lithium iron phosphate battery. We talk about that on the channel all the time. You know, thousands of cycles out of these, depending on your depth of discharge. We did do some testing with the battery uh, as we always do. So this is a 100 amp hour battery and we pulled a full 108 amp hours out of it. So not only is it the smallest, but it's bumping up there in the highest capacity that we've checked out so far, 108 amp hours out of this thing. We also did our bench test, so let's cut to that. It is time for our battery test with our Texella battery. Let me show you what I have for our test setup today. What we have here is our 2000 watt inverter. This is a Bouge RV 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter that I use for these tests. The battery is rated at 1280 watts. This is a 2000 watt inverter. So we're able to pull more than the battery's capacity is. And what we're going to do is test that over current protection. We already did a capacity test on it. It was 100 and 108 amp hours, which is right up there bumping up with a high score. Uh, so fantastic output out of this battery. Now we're gonna check the protection system for the overcurrent. What we're going to do for this test is I have two heaters over here. I'm probably only gonna need one. Uh, believe it or not, sometimes I've actually used two to load this thing up, but we hopefully won't get there. Um, we're gonna ramp in one of these heaters with a variable load. I'm gonna start the clock as soon as it hits over 100 amps because I'm curious you know, what that duration is over the 100, 100 amp rating or the 1C discharge rating. On this right one, you know, really all you want to pay attention to is the voltage and the amperage. The amperage is what is coming directly out of here. This Hall effect sensor right here is monitoring the electrons coming out to the heater, to the inverter. So without further ado, let's get started. We are going to turn this guy on, camera on, and uh, I'm going to start ramping in our heater. So watch this. We're at 27 amps, and I'm just going to start spooling it up. Let's see what we got. 70, 86, 104. So we'll start the clock there. We're over 100. 111, 13, 26, 158. We've got 2,000 watts coming out of the battery. There we go. So that turned off. That took, what, 15 seconds or so over 100 amps. There's absolutely nothing to complain about there. I've had some that pushed almost 200 amps for 30 seconds, and those start to get crispy. So the bench test did just fine, right? That's what you want it to do. It's going to sense that overcurrent, kick itself out, let you deal with it without any damage to, to different components. Make sure you have your circuit protection set up for your wiring, because that's obviously what you got to fuse or use a breaker on, is your wiring. Now, speaking of those connections, these are M6 terminals. So they're a bit small. And so when I reached out to them, I said, you know, why did you pick that? It's honestly in the, in the name of size. So trying to get the smallest footprint that they can get, they went with an M6 terminal, which is just fine, especially for those running it. Uh, you can use it for a trolling motor, but I'm gonna talk more a little bit more about marine electronics. No problem with a, a six millimeter ring terminal to a 10 gauge wire, whatever you're running uh, to run your marine electronics. It does have integrated handles, which I like. You know, these are a lot better than like those ropes. And it was kind of getting in the way of the lanyards or the, the nylon straps. That's what I'm trying to think of. So I like that as well. Overall, very small battery, very good capacity. BMS is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It is, it's the smallest one we've seen. So if that's something that you're looking for, 
Check out the links in the descriptions and we'll see you for the next one.